He started off as a teenage heartthrob, a leading man who could do no wrong. He rose to the top of his game with meteoric speed and has become one of the most powerful people in Hollywood. Somebody would pay $80, 90000000 million to make that movie without a script, without a director, without co-stars. Just Tom. However, his controversial beliefs and controlling nature have started to damage the icon who once had it all. For a good sort of five minutes, everyone was watching going, is he on drugs? It was the most bizarre thing. The truth has never really been told, and that's not about his sexuality at all. It's about just Tom Cruise as a person. Tom Cruise is exposed. <laughs> For 25 years, Tom Cruise has ruled Hollywood. But in May 2005, he took even his fans by surprise when he declared his love for a young up-and-coming actress 18 years his junior. The news came out of the blue, and a cynical public were less than convinced that Katie Holmes and Tom Cruise were a match made in heaven. Whispers of contracts and auditions quickly circulated as Tom set to work constructing the perfect fairy tale romance. Tom just rang Katie up. She'd been in Dawson's Creek and said he'd like to meet her. And she went to meet him at his offices, not knowing why, thinking it was perhaps for a part. Uh, but she had avowed in public that she would very much like to marry Tom Cruise. And um, that's what happened. First of all, the conspiracy theory with Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes was that um, he'd actually sort of held a casting to pick his next wife, you know? So he was just looking for somebody to have a kid with. And um, Katie Holmes was the winner of that little contest. And it did seem sort of bizarre that she was plucked out of nowhere, but um, you never know where love comes from. <laughs> the whirlwind courtship that Tom inflicted upon a bemused Katie Holmes was viewed by many as a cliche-ridden PR exercise. Tom's very public proclamations of his love for Katie were accompanied by stiff and awkward displays of affection, culminating in a hasty marriage proposal on top of the Eiffel Tower that had more than a faint whiff of fromage. A lot of the things that Tom Cruise thought would endear him in the eyes of the public by, you know, proposing and, and wooing Katie Holmes really backfired spectacularly. I mean, we all saw those pictures in Rome where he was embracing her so uh, stiffly and he had his kind of hand behind her head and he was like, is it okay, you know, I'm going to kiss you now and all the photographers. And it was like their second date. It was so contrived. And then, of course, the big proposal on the top of the Eiffel Tower. Again, cheesy. I, I think, you know, this is what Tom Cruise thinks is cool. I think everybody wants to know what happened with Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes, possibly even Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes, because both of them looked like they'd suddenly been smacked by the romantic fairy or something. You know, suddenly their whole lives change, and so quickly as well. And it was almost as though he kind of had this rebirth as this um, young prince of Hollywood who'd found his virgin bride. It was deeply romantic, but came from nowhere. It kind of kept most of us on our toes. And the couple managed to keep us guessing, with the announcement that Katie was pregnant with Tom's child just months after they got engaged. Soon, a swollen Katie Holmes trailed after an ecstatic Tom at publicity events, where she was proudly paraded before the world's press. The birth of baby Suri was announced just days before the European premieres of Mission Impossible 3, and Katie gallantly gave Tom her blessing to continue promoting the film while she rested at home. The coinciding dates of the birth with the film's release worked well to generate publicity for the film, but we were not allowed to see pictures of the baby until some months later, fueling speculation that the couple had something to hide. A rumor mill began to grow, saying, was there a baby? Was it their baby or whatever? And it just seemed very suspicious because it evidently is the convention that um, stars release pictures of their babies early on. That's really the million dollar question. Why did we have to wait so long to see a picture of baby Suri? There have been a lot of conspiracy theories about baby Suri. Everything from the fact that her father may have been Chris Klein, Katie Holmes' ex, it could, her father could have been a Scientology sperm donor, even L. Ron Hubbard, uh, you know, saved his sperm and froze it. There have been all these conspiracies. I think one of the most interesting ones, however, is that Suri may have been born earlier than we were told. Eventually the pictures come out, you know, in Vanity Fair, and people say, well, it doesn't look like either of them. They must have bought that baby or rented that baby. It's just ridiculous at some point that, uh, you know, it fills tabloids, but it doesn't have any, you know, real 
place in reality. Baby Suri was not the only famous newborn embroiled in a battle for column inches that spring. Born to two of Hollywood's most desirable superstars, the hotly anticipated baby Brangelina proved to be tough competition. Around the time, if you remember, you've got the whole Brad and Angelina baby pictures, and that there was, you know, people paid millions for their pictures of their baby. And I think, you know, Tom actually then got on a bit of a high horse that people weren't offering near enough half the amount that, that Brangelina got. Media buyers around the world were not bending over backwards for buying that picture because Tom Cruise had a value. And that value didn't meet up to his expectations, and that's why it took so long for that picture to come out, because he valued it much higher. On the 18th of November 2006, Tom and Katie were to court the press once again, during an opulent wedding ceremony at the fairy tale Braccioni Castle in Italy. There was intense speculation as to when uh, Tom and Katie would get married and where they would get married, but they settled on a, an old castle in Braccioni, which is quite well known in Italy for famous people to get married in. And one or two stars trickled along, like the Beckhams came down from Madrid, Will and Jada Smith came, and I think J-Lo. I think they were very cooperative with the press. I mean, there, I saw a lot of photographs. Uh, everybody seemed to be aware of who was at the wedding, and I think that they, you know, restricted probably the press, but they had it set up just the way they wanted it, so the photographers all got their shots. Tom Cruise has constructed the perfect fairy tale, love story, a happy ending, baby. Uh, you know, most of the public isn't buying it. You know, for a guy his age, his third marriage, you know, it was it was a little bit of kind of, you know, what are you trying to prove here? Coming up on Tom Cruise Exposed, jumping the couch on Oprah, and Tom's PR disaster. You do what you want to do, Tom Cruise, and you can still make money at the box office. When you're knocking $150 million off, then you're going to start having to make your own films.